Hi all, Jim here with another episode of Amazon DSP and Flex Drivers Advanced Tips. In this episode, we are going to cover five things you probably didn't learn in your three day Amazon training. Now, I understand that Amazon only has a certain amount of time, and things like safety and security are important to cover during their training. But as you watch this video, you're going to see some real life scenarios that you will face, and my hope is after watching this video, you will be better prepared to reduce your stress on the road. Many of these topics have or will have their own full length videos in this series, such as group stops and van loading and organization. So be sure to check the channel playlist and subscribe to get a more robust explanation of some of these tips. Number one on our list is time window deliveries. In a perfect world, businesses that have hours of operation would all be front loaded in your daily itinerary. In our real world, they are not. Many times you will see a group of these all together and sometimes your route may start in a business or industrial area, but you may see a time window delivery all the way at the end of your route itinerary. Depending on what time your wave loads at the depot, this can cause a missed time window delivery. If you do not arrive for your first stop until 11 p.m., a 3 p.m. time window is not very far through your route. On one of our routes, the post office is a stop, and unfortunately I've seen new people miss that time window and have to bring a lot of packages back at the end of the day. To avoid missing time window deliveries, it's important to check your itinerary at the beginning of your day or route. Scroll all the way through the list and look for these deliveries and make sure that you have a plan to address them. In most cases, breaking away after your lunch to skip ahead to any remaining time window deliveries will ensure that they get done while the business or apartment complex leasing office is still open. You might say, why should I care? I just go in the order of my itinerary. That's Amazon's issue. Partly true, but at the end of the day, return packages do count against your driver associate score, and it's your ultimate responsibility to get them to the customer. Number two on our list is pick lists. Unfortunately, not every DSP in every location gets a pick list when they are assigned their van for the day. In this case, you have to write down the zones and associated bags while reviewing your itinerary in the Flex app. Either way, there is some important information to know before you head out for the day. The pick list will show you your assigned route, the staging area of your U-boats for loadout, the bag color number associated with each zone, loose packages for that zone, total packages for the zone, the total number of bags you need to plan to organize in your van, the number of oversized packages you will have, your total packages for the day, the number of time window deliveries, and finally, how big is this load in cubic feet? Now, like everything else, there are variables. Sometimes the pick list is just plain wrong. It may say that you have 16 bags and you actually have 18. The most common reason for this is that there are too many packages for a single sort zone to go in one tote. So they add a second tote to that zone and it may have as little as one to three packages in it. This can cause some confusion for you when you have a delivery with two packages at the same address, but they are in separate totes. I have also had an instance where the count of the oversize was completely off. In this case, it showed I had about a dozen when in fact I had almost 30. This makes a big difference in how you set your van up for the day, but I'll cover that in another video. Next to the tote identification, the most important part of the pick list is the sort zone ID. Here is where you will decide where in your van and what order the oversized packages are to be loaded. Now in the Amazon training, they show you that you can sort through the packages, write numbers on the boxes, and one by one carefully load them in your van. Anyone who has done this job for more than a day will tell you there is not time to do all of that. The experienced drivers can load in 10 to 12 minutes perfectly, but new drivers are going to be completely overwhelmed the first time they have three or four U-boats full of oversized packages. I'll go into organizing your load in a future video. For now, make sure your first three sort zones are within reach and put your last three sort zones on the bottom or under other packages. This will get you started and the van will open up by the time you get to your third or fourth bag. Next up, and number three on our list, is knowing the functionality of the Flex app in and out. 
Did you know that asking dispatch or Amazon to mark a package as delivered counts against your driver or associate score? Did you know that you can manually enter a TBA number and mark the package yourself? How about that you can scan a package and see where it is in your itinerary? Do you know when and how to use airplane mode? Or where in the app to find, I'm at the correct location but my GPS isn't working? All of this functionality is going to save you a lot of time, a lot of frustration, and a lot of stress. Key things to know include, when you are in a situation where the geolocation of the delivery is wrong, you must hit the back button to access the help function with, I'm at the correct location, but my GPS isn't working. In most cases, this will temporarily disable the geofence and allow you to scan and complete the delivery. At some point, you will be in an area where you're going to lose cell service. When this happens, your turn-by-turn -turn nav will not work and the app will use offline maps. You will see your location and the location of the delivery on the map, and you will need to zoom in and navigate yourself to the next stop. Going into airplane mode or turning off internet data is helpful in this case also. To manually enter a TBA number that won't scan or you forgot to scan before you drop that package over a fence, the customer scooped it up off the porch, or you already put it in a third party locker, from the scan packages screen, Pull down the help menu and click on manually enter TBA number. From there you can proceed with delivery or mark package as delivered. Lastly, you are going to see some very frustrating nav issues. From trying to route you through a permanent barricade to putting you on and off highways. In these cases where you just can't figure out where or how to go, use your own personal device and ways or another maps feature and manually enter the address. Otherwise, you will waste a lot of time moving in circles. Learn how and when to use the map itinerary to prevent you from going in circles in apartment complexes or in and out of an apartment or business building because there are multiple stops for the same address. By clicking on Menu, Itinerary, Map, you can see how many pin drops there are for that building and prepare to deliver them more logically depending on the situation. See the Group Stops video for more on this. On a side note, you will end up with a dead phone sooner or later doing this. Sometimes you are simply moving too fast for the rabbit to stay charged. Sometimes you forget to plug it in enough between stops. When this happens, you will be directed to use the Flex app on your personal device, which will murder your mentor score. And if you have an iPhone, make you want to murder yourself. If your DSP does not provide a portable charger with every van, I highly recommend that you have your own and a good long length heavy duty cable with a micro USB connection. I'll have a note in the show notes to the one that I carry every day, and it's one issue I never have to deal with. The portable charger goes in my vest pocket, and the phone stays plugged in all day. This brings us to number four on the list, group stops. This is just a brief overview of another full-length video on this topic. Drivers have the ability in the Flex app to add locations to this stop. And nearly every driver in the nation on any forum of your choice is saying enough. The number of stops in your itinerary will be underestimated by 25 to 40 percent because of group stops. And in most cases, the group stops are completely illogical, make your job harder, and do not improve your efficiency. Unless, like a few, you're going to use it as a cheat code. Yes, it is a cheat code. And I'm not going to reveal it because I don't want to encourage its use and sooner or later, the ones that do do it will be caught. There is a metric in the Amazon Driver Associate Report that will reveal the cheat's use of this tactic. What is a group stop? It's more than one delivery to a unique address that is clumped together with one or more addresses. In the app, you will see three packages at three locations. There are some big issues with group stops. First, many are nowhere near each other. You may be on a residential street where there are five unique addresses grouped together covering half the block. If there are multiple packages per location, you are trying to carry an armful of packages, watch where you are walking, and use your phone to complete deliveries. Many apartment complexes have now been grouped where apartment number 3 and number 87 are in the same stop, and these could be literally a quarter mile apart. And the most infuriating issue with group stops is once they are grouped, they cannot be ungrouped. To review the full length video on group stops you can find on this channel, apartment complexes should never be grouped, 
unless it's an individual apartment served by the same entrance or stairwell. If number 405 and number 403 are both on the fourth floor of the same stairwell, yes, they should be grouped. No one wants to climb those stairs twice. Apartment buildings should be grouped. If not, you will be going in and out of an apartment building for consecutive stops, sometimes four, six, eight times in a row. Houses that are next door to each other or directly across the street from each other can be grouped, but don't group the entire cul-de-sac with five unique addresses. The best tactic with group stops in most instances is to scan just the packages associated with one of the unique addresses in that group and click on Continue with One Delivery. Then you do the same with each address in the group. It's a couple of extra clicks in the app, but it will save you from jockeying 50-pound bags of dog food, four envelopes, and a couple boxes on foot all over a neighborhood. And finally, number five, label issues. There will come a time when you tear your van apart looking through your oversize for a package with the correct driver aid number, only to circle back 10 minutes later and see that it was, in fact, a yellow envelope. Some things to know to save you frustration. A yellow envelope can be in fact an envelope, a package, or a poly bag. A poly bag may be a white bag, but it also may be an envelope. A box is sometimes an envelope, and an envelope is sometimes a bag. A medium box is frequently in your oversized and not always marked in the app as not in bag and driver aid labels will be missing or incorrect. So what do you do? If the app directs you to look for a package, box, or envelope with a driver aid sticker of XYZ, and you do not find it in the contents of the tote or overflow, make sure you check the addresses on your package before you mark it as missing. Unless the app shows not in bag, first assume that a box may be an envelope or a package may be a poly bag, and look through all of your tote packages before tearing through your overflow boxes. In the event you absolutely cannot find the package, you have two choices, and your DSP or dispatch may prefer one over the other. You can simply pull down your itinerary and skip to the next stop and move on, hoping that the package will show up later in the day, or from the Scan Packages screen, you can pull down the Help menu and mark the packages missing. I prefer to mark the packages missing, because if you simply skip the stop, you will not be able to later mark it as missing without driving back to that location or having dispatch or support do it for you. This also makes it easier for me later if I see a package hanging around and wonder where it belongs, as I can either scan it from the itinerary screen or check my problems list in the itinerary summary and see if the address matches a package I couldn't find. At that point, you click on that address and select Reattempt Delivery. Note that if you do this, it will be your next stop, and if you skip it, it goes back in the problem file. <music> Lastly, know how to manually enter the TBA when packages cannot be scanned because the label is damaged or the barcode's covered by the driver aid sticker. You really shouldn't be asking dispatch or support to mark multiple packages for you throughout the day. And that's it for this video. I sincerely hope that this series helps to save you steps and reduce your stress as an Amazon DSP or flex driver. Subscribe to be advised when the next videos in this series are published. Until then, stay safe and healthy. Bye for now.